Today on FAQ Fridays, we're going to be discussing solar array design and layout. My name is Curtis Ward. Today, welcome back Sean Haddock, S5's Director of Field Application and Product Support. Sean, thanks for taking the time to come back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I want to point out to you all that I'm in different clothing than you normally see, particularly my hat. Check out the new S5 hats. So continuing on with our discussion on solar arrays on your metal roof, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is, what is design and layout? Well, there's a lot of differences there. One is design and the other is layout. The design happens in the early stages at a desk where the actual layout is done generally up on the roof but is also part of the design. So let's go ahead and dive in. First off, what is design? Well, design starts out with knowing some dimensions of your roof. You've got to know what your roof profile is. You'll find out the holding strength of the S5 clamp when using a PV kit. And ultimately, you've got to determine what is your uplift on this solar module so that you can be sure you don't point load clips within the, within the roof and still have enough clamps to hold the solar array from lifting up. So when you design the array, is it the same on a rail system as opposed to a rail lift system? No, some factors you have when you're designing an array with with a rail list or direct attach as we call it, you've got a built-in rail right here. It's your roof seam. So that's where it is real important that you don't point load the clips holding the roof to the structure. It's also important when you're using a rail. And what happens when you're using a rail is instead of mounting here like you see we're in landscape, you'll turn and mount in portrait. And a lot of what we see is that guys will put a clamp every four feet well, now you're definitely point loading those clips. When using the PV kit, it's pretty hard to point load the clips because you're attaching so frequently. Okay. So some key items to consider when designing an array are one, your roof and what's holding it to the structure. Next would be, how are you gonna attach and what are you gonna attach with? Because you've gotta know the holding strength of that. But before you even get there and try to figure out how many you need to hold down a module, you've gotta know what is my wind uplift? What do I got to build this to? And what does that translate to on this module? Then you can factor everything in to figure out, okay, I need two clamps per side or I need four clamps per side. And it would be different again if you were using a rail. Okay. A roof gets separated into different wind zones. And so in the corner zones, I may have to use four clamps per side where in the middle zones, I may only need two clamps per side. Some other things, again, would be that when you're using a railless system, like the S5 PV kit, you're gonna mount in landscape most of the time. Where if you're using a rail, you're gonna attach in portrait. Another thing that guys typically wanna do are contractors, they wanna get as many modules as they can on a roof. And that plays a big factor in whether you can go in portrait or whether you go in landscape. So if you're installing the S5 PV kit, are you still able to use a portrait orientation when designing your array? Yes, in some cases. It was actually done on Apple's facility. Oh, okay. Uh, there was special testing done to determine that we could do so because you've got such a longer distance between where your attachment points are. You've also got to, depending on the module manufacturer, whether or not they will allow it. In addition to making sure that you're leaving access around your modules, for maintenance or repair, or even firefighters if there happen to be a fire. And we'll come into that more in layout. So you mentioned fire. Now, is there any sort of fire codes you have to follow when you're doing the design of your array? Yes. Uh, the, it varies based on the jurisdiction you're in and what those setbacks may be, what type of building it is. It's good to know and it's critical to know what all those codes are when you're first designing your array. 
So what about junction boxes or inverters? That's also a key thing to consider when, when you're doing your design. Um, if you're using microinverters or things like that, you've got to know where they're going to be placed, what your wire runs are going to be. Oftentimes a microinverter wants to be underneath this panel, so you'll use another clamp midway up the panel. Um, things like that are definitely important to consider in design. So now we just learned about design, now what about layout? Well with layout, that's where my specialty is. That's where I get in and I help because it never really happens on paper the way it happens on the roof. It's always going to be different. There's going to be things you run into that change. One thing is, is that when you're drawing something on paper, you expect this roof is going to be square. Now I know from years in the field, this roof will not be square. And so you've got to handle those nuances. There's other things like, like roof vents that may not have been on the plans that you've got to figure out how to avoid this roof vent. So when it comes to layout, there's a lot of factors involved. You know, we were just talking about wire. I've yet to go on a job site where we were doing a solar array and did the wire the way it was done in design because it worked out that on the roof it needed to be done a different way. So once you're on the job site, are there any things to consider when you're actually on the roof? Yes, yeah, so some of the first things I consider when I get to a job site is first and foremost is safety and fall protection. Um, are you going to use permanent lifelines? Are you going to be removing them? making sure you don't do any damage to the customer's roof. Um, some of those things you really got to figure out on site. The other things would be, you're going to be taking a large amount of product up onto this roof. How do you need to stage it across the roof so that you don't collapse it? Um, knowing those things and making sure that you don't have too many modules sitting over here, spread them out, don't put as many on the roof at once. Uh, those are some of the first factors. Then from there you jump into figuring out where your correction gaps are going to be, how out of square is your roof, and, and getting your square points with your 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, things like that. So in summary, what's more important, the design or the layout? Well, I would say they're both equally important. Um, a big part of that is, is doing it in the office, figuring out your codes, your wind loads, where you're going to be attaching, you know, what your setbacks are, all of those various things, in addition to how you're going to space your modules before you even get them put into place. In addition to that, you've got your fall protection, most important, if your flag's got to be around the edge of the roof. It's all going to change once you get up there, a lot of it will change, but at least you'll have a good idea of what those factors are, and most importantly, do no damage to the roof. All right, well, I appreciate your expertise on the subject, and thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you guys have any more questions on design and layout, or if you have a question on a new topic, comment down below. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next Friday. It's Five's product development. No, that, oh, I'm going to get this again. I had it. <laughs> Today, I'm... Ju Start over, I had to itch. Oh. <laughs> then you will want to... Uh... <laughs> We get asked a lot is <laughs> what the heck was I saying? <laughs>